Thomas in trouble. There is a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch line. It goes for some distance along by the road. Thomas was very careful there in case anyone was coming. Peep, pip, peep, he always whistled. Then people got out of the way and he puffed slowly along with his trucks rumbling behind him. Early one morning there was a policeman standing close to the line. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the constable who used to live in the village. Peep, peep, good morning, Thomas whistled. He expected that this new policeman would be as friendly as the other one. But he was sorry to see that the policeman didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross. Disgraceful, he spluttered. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet. And now, he said, engines come whistling suddenly behind me. I'm sorry, sir, said Thomas. I only said good morning to you. Where is your cow catcher? asked the policeman sharply. But I don't catch cows, sir, said Thomas. Don't be funny, snapped the policeman. No side plates either, he muttered, and he wrote in his notebook. Then he spoke sternly to Thomas. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front. You haven't, so you are dangerous to the public. Rubbish, said Thomas's driver crossly. We've been along here hundreds of times and there has never been an accident. That makes it worse, said the policeman, and he wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas's driver climbed back into the cab, and Thomas puffed sadly away. The fat controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. His wife had just given him some more coffee. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, he said. You are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the fat controller. I am sorry, my dear, he said a few minutes later. Thomas is in trouble with the police and I must go at once. He gulped down his coffee and hurried from the room. At the station, Thomas's driver told the fat controller what had happened. Dangerous to the public, indeed. We'll see about that, said the fat controller. The policeman came onto the platform, and the fat controller spoke to him at once. But however much the fat controller argued with him, it was no good. He felt quite exhausted. I'm sorry, he said to Thomas's driver. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir, said Thomas sadly. They will say that I look like a tram. The fat controller stared at Thomas, and then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We want a tram engine, he said. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He hasn't enough work to do, and he needs a change. I'll write to his controller at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said the fat controller. I see that you have brought Henrietta with you. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby anxiously. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said the fat controller gravely. We couldn't allow that. Toby made the trucks behave even better than Thomas did. At first, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and made the policeman jump that they have been firm friends ever since.